Sometime in about 1962 or 1963, a technique called starch gel electrophoresis was becoming the fashionable thing for separating out the proteins, the antigenic proteins that we'd, we'd got from the tryptosomes um, into their component um, proteins so that we could see um, how one, an one antigen genetic variety differed from another antigenic variety in different um, relapsed strains of trypanosomiasis. So I would prepare um, samples of antigen, this used to take about a fortnight, we'd have to infect lots of rats with a particular strain, collect the blood, spin off the red cells, get the trypanosomes, freeze dry them, make a solution of the freeze dried um, um, protein and then we would run this protein in this starch gel electrophoresis. Well, at the time, it was a pretty new thing at Mill Hill. There was only one person who could do it, Keith Hobbs. Keith Hobbs was the person in biological standards who could do, who could do starch gels, and he had the equipment to do it. So Neil said, right, well, we're taking the protein up for Keith, and Keith is going to run the electrophoresis for us, and we'll go up afterwards and we'll, we'll get it. So I took the proteins up and Keith ran the starch gel and he phoned up and said it had been done and we went up and, and the technique was that you had to, the gel was about, I suppose it was about, about three eighths to a half an inch thick, about three eighths I suppose. You sliced it horizontally with a, a cheese cutting wire and then you peeled off the top half which you stained in amido black and this would show you where the proteins were. And then you could you could match that up with the with the unstained part. You could cut out the bits of gel, and then you could isolate the various proteins. And that you could use in further immunodiffusion experiments against antibodies to see which ones they were reacting to. That was what you wanted to do. But you needed to stain this top half to see where the bands had got to after a three hours of the electrophoresis. And I said to Neil, you know, well I can do that. No, he wouldn't let me do this. So um, he peeled back this piece of gel and you peeled it back onto a piece of polythene. That's how you lay the polythene on top and you, it was quite tricky. You had to peel it back and then you had to carry it across to the amido black, pop it in the amido black. Well Neil got halfway across the room to the amido black and the whole lot slipped off the polythene onto the floor and smashed into smithereens basically. I mean it's completely unusable and I, I was, I'd only been at Mill Hill three or four years then and I was pretty green. Neil went mad and there was quite a lot of words used that I don't think I'd heard before. I certainly hadn't heard them in the lab. And uh, anyway, that was the end of that, about a fortnight's work really. And from then on, I did it all. So starch gel electrophysis started to become a, a regular thing that we did. In fact, it was being done, it would have been, it eventually became done all over the place. But at that time, it was Keith Hobbs doing it and Neil Brown wanted to do it. So uh, we said, well, we need to have our own equipment. So we had to get a power supply made in electronics then, which before I was involved in electronics, it was produced by um, by John John Lewin. Um, I think it was about 100 volts. I've forgotten how many volts. It was quite dangerous, 100 to 200 volts of power. And we had to have a, a glass plate and a perspex frame made where you poured the gel into. And I had to learn how to make the gels. And how you made the gels was the, the starch came in in these Greek big cardboard containers. You dissolved it in, in um, I suppose it was some sort of saline solution, I don't remember now. And you, you, you mixed it all up and you then had to shake it and mix it and shake it and mix it over a flame, get it all dissolved. And it was all full of bubbles and you had to degas it. And the degassing of the starch gel was the, was the tricky bit. You had to time the degassing so that it degassed it just the right amount. And I was pretty good at this. You could tell by the floppiness of the gel in the... It was in a round bottom flask I used to make them. And once it got to the right feel as a flop, you knew it was ready to put on the, the, um, the, uh, the, the evacuator from the water pump. You know, these water pumps that would produce a vacuum on the taps. And, uh, and, and suck out the air and bubbles would come out and then you would quickly pour the gel and that would be fine. And I became very good at this and I was doing it for quite a few other people before they got the hang of it. And at the time I think I was probably the best at it at Mill Hill. I thought so anyway. 